Hi, it's Madeline. I hope you're having a really good day wherever you are and welcome to this tutorial which is for a longer body, longer sleeved version of my crochet wrap top. So I had a lot of requests for longer sleeves now that we're getting into the winter and I have to say I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It's super cosy. So I hope you enjoy this one and if you do, don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps me keep making these videos. And I think that's enough talking, let's get started. So we will start by making a slip knot, and you can do this whatever way you prefer. I do a simple crossover method and I'll pop up the video if you need to watch that. And then we are going to chain 20. Now once you've got your chain of 20, you are going to chain one more, that is your turning chain. We're not going to work into that chain, we're going to work into the second chain from the hook. So skip that first one and find the centre of that second chain. And then your hook goes straight through the middle of that chain. And we're going to put in a single crochet. So to do this, go straight into the middle of the chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook and that is your single crochet. And then we're going to continue to put one single crochet in every chain until the end of the row. So that will be 20 single crochets in total. So I'm just working the last single crochet of this row and then we are going to start the next row. So this is what it will look like when you finished one row in those chains. We're going to chain one and work into the first single crochet stitch. So you can find that stitch because it's the V stitch. So it looks like there's a little V on top and you can find the space directly under the V and go onto both sides of the V stitch. So you're going onto both loops yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through both loops, single crochet. And then we're going to start doing the ribbing effect by skipping the front loop and going into the back loop only. So that is the loop that is furthest away from you when you're working. So instead of going onto both, find that back loop only, and again, put in a single crochet. And here again is that back loop only stitch, just working into that loop that's furthest away from you with single crochets. And we're going to continue to do this all the way until the end of the row, but not into the very last stitch. So find that very last stitch, that very last V there, that'll be your 20th stitch. Don't work into that one, leave that one unworked and I'll meet you at the end of the row. So this is the row of back loop only single crochets. This is what it will look like. And on that very last stitch, find both sides of that V. And we're going to do the same that we did with the very first stitch. We're going to work under both loops and put in a single crochet. And that is row two complete. And this is what it will look like. So then to do row three, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we're going to repeat all of those steps again. So we're going to go onto both loops of that very first single crochet. So skip your chain, put in a single crochet onto both loops, and then start working single crochets into the back loop only, into all of the stitches apart from the very last stitch, which again is going onto both loops. And then you're going to keep repeating that until you have the width you need for your calf. So for me, that was 40 rows of ribbing. And now we're going to start working along the top to start our body piece. So I've chained one and you're going to work into that very first row. So the last row you just made, and you're going to go into the top of the row, finding that gap at the very last, last stitch. And again, just working a single crochet. And 
and then you're just going to keep working along. So find your next row and put a single crochet in the top of that. So you're putting one single crochet per row and I'll just show you a few more. In total you'll have the same number of single crochets as the rows of ribbing. So for me that will be 40. So I'm working into that very last row there, that is my 40th single crochet. And this is what it looks like when you've worked across the top. And I'm now going to change to a 5.5mm hook. And this is just to make the um, herringbone stitches on the body a little bit chunkier. So to start this row you want to chain 2 and turn your work. And then you need to skip those two chains that you just made and work into the first stitch so that's your single crochet from the previous row you want to go under both loops in every stitch so you're going back to working under both loops into that single crochet find the gap yarn over go through both sides yarn over and pull through you're going to have three loops on your hook and then you're going to pull straight through that second loop and then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. So I'll show you that one more time and this time we're going to be working in the same space again. So we're putting two herringbone double crochets into that first stitch. So that was two herringbone stitches into the first stitch. In this next stitch, so the second stitch from the previous row, you're going to just put in one herringbone stitch. And then we're going to repeat these steps. So two herringbone stitches into the next stitch, and then one into the stitch after. And this will increase your row so you end up with that nice kind of um, chunky balloon balloon style sleeve so that's two in one and then one in the next one and just repeat this alternating two stitches one stitch all the way until the end so this is the whole row and I finished by putting in one herringbone stitch in that last stitch and I finished in total with 60 stitches because I started with 40 and added 20 and now I'm going to chain two and start the next row so I'm finding that first stitch I'm skipping those two chains and working into the first herringbone stitch from the previous row and putting in a herringbone stitch there just one so we are just putting in one herringbone stitch in each stitch from the previous row all the way along and we're going to repeat this step where you chain two turn your work one herringbone stitch in each for a total of 15 more rows and that's what it will look like when you've done 15 more and now we can start working from the sleeve into the body piece so as just the same as before you're going to chain two turn your work and find that first stitch skipping the two chains and you're going to put in a herringbone stitch into that first stitch and then you're going to put another one in the same space so we are increasing at the start of the row by adding an extra herringbone stitch and then from there you're just going to put one stitch in the following so keep going one herringbone stitch in each and I'll meet you at the end of this row and when you reach the very last stitch you're going to mirror what you did at the beginning by increasing at the end so in the last stitch you're going to put in two herringbone stitches 
and this is how it repeats from now on. So you always increase at the start and at the end of every row. So all rows start the same, you chain two, you turn your work, and you put in two herringbone stitches, one all the way to the end, and then two in the very last stitch. And then I repeated that for 42 rows, and this is what it looks like when you're finished. So if I fold this piece in half, you'll see that there is the calf, the sleeve, and the body piece. So once we finish the body piece, we can add some optional edging, um, just where it's against the neckline, I like to add a row of single crochets, twisted single crochets. And the way you want to start this is by doing a row of just single crochets, one in each stitch. So I'm going to chain one and turn my work and put one single crochet in every stitch from the previous row all the way along to the other end of the body piece. Now that's my one full row of single crochet stitches done and now I'm going to chain one and turn my work and we're going to do the twisted single crochet row. So I think this is a really nice stitch to have on the end, it just adds a little bit of detail to finish it off and it's not that complicated. You start just the same as a normal single crochet under both loops and then pull up so your yarn is quite loose on your hook and you have two loops and then twist your hook all the way around and yarn over pull through like you would with a normal single crochet. Now I did this one a little bit too tight and then you have to work to get it through so the looser you do it the easier it will be and as you keep practicing it along the row you'll find you suddenly start doing it much more naturally. The first few times can be a bit tricky. So here I've pulled up a little bit looser yarn which should hopefully make it a bit easier. And sometimes you just have to pull it all the way through as much as you can. And we'll do one more together. And then just continue that all the way to the end of the row. And this is what it looks like at the end of the row. And so then all you need to do is to pull through with your yarn and to weave this in. So I like to just chain one with this particular stitch before I pull through. And then just pull a nice um, long enough yarn tail for you to weave that in. So now we can start doing these seams. So we'll start by seaming from the end of the cuff, working up the sleeve. So I've got this um, right sides facing each other. So I have the right, the wrong side towards me. So where your seam will be on the inside. And we're just going to go into the side of the last stitch on those ribbing rows, or I suppose they're the first stitch because they're where you started. But you can see where the two line up in those 20 um, stitches of your ribbing and you're going to start joining them together. So I've picked up the one side of each stitch on each side of the ribbing and I'm pulling through a new piece of yarn to start with and I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to start working single crochets to create the seam. So I put a single crochet in the same space as where I started and then you're going to put in one single crochet for each stitch. So in total I'll do 20 single crochets. Now the chain stitches on the other side can be a little bit tricky to work into, so just work your way through, picking up a loop each time, and just keep double checking that everything is aligned as you work your way up the seam.
and when you've reached the end of the ribbing it will look like this and then of course you want to weave in that starting yarn tail to make that secure and we can start making the seam that goes further up the sleeve Now working up the sleeves, you just want to do the same thing. Make sure that your rows are aligned. So the parts where you didn't increase that initial bit of the sleeve um, are all lined up. So those first 15 rows that you made, and then we'll start seaming up with single crochets again. So I like to put in a stitch right at the start and then in each of these sections, um, so that's going into the side really of the single crochet row that you made across the top of the ribbing. But you don't need to be too particular about it, just continue along. And I like to put roughly three single crochets per each of these uh, two sets of rows. So two herringbone crochet rows and you just want to be making sure you're putting in enough stitches to not be bunching up the material um, and also to not be stretching your stitches too far. Okay, so I continued seaming all the way up the straight portion of the sleeves and slightly further along because I still wanted to fit into my waist. So you end up with this slight bat wing sleeve effect and I did roughly um, 12 more rows joined together. And then when you get to the end, you want to chain two and pull through. And I just chain two to create a little bit of a knot at the end of that seam just to make it nice and secure. So I'm going to go find some scissors, chop off the yarn tail, and then pull those two chains into a knot at the end. So here I'm going to show you how to line the two body pieces up. So um, I like to put in stitch markers once you've done the seams of the arms on both sides. Now ignore the fact that's in the wrong place because I filmed this and I made the waist way too wide because I forgot to measure where I wanted it to fit first. So um, I had just done to the end of the sleeves and you might prefer this because it'll give it at least a looser look, but I still wanted it to come in a little bit more and have a bit more shape. So um, the principle's the same, you're going to stack them on top of each other. And so this is right sides facing out now. So the um, arm seam is hidden on the inside and you're alternating them um, one on top of the other to um, make those body pieces go together. And what we'll do is seam the two sides together on each side. Okay, so to get started, I picked that right hand corner, so obviously we're working right to left. So I just picked the side that's facing me, and I'm going to go into the very first stitch on both of the pieces. And I'm starting right from the edge of that arm seam there. And I'm still using my 5mm hook, because this is going to become the ribbing. So I'm going to pull through a new piece of yarn the same way we normally join, which is pull all the way through and put in a chain one. And then in the same space, you want to put in a single crochet stitch. And what we're going to do, it's pretty much the same as when you were seaming up the side, but now you're joining the two pieces together. So continue working all the way round, putting in single crochets. 
keep your body pieces aligned and I put in roughly three single crochets per each of those bumps that you can see just the same as you did with the um, arm seam So here I'm just going to show you when you get round to the other side and you're starting a new piece, just go straight to the other side of that underarm seam that you've made and join it to the new body piece. Now when you get back to the start, you want to find that first uh, single crochet stitch that you made and join with a slip stitch. And now your two body pieces are joined together so we can start working on the ribbing. Okay, so working from right where you left off, we are going to start adding the number of chains that you want for the waist ribbing. I wanted quite long ribbing to make this longer and warmer, so I did 25 in total. And once you've done that length, you're going to add one, and that is your turning chain. The same as when we did our ribbing before for the cuffs. And that's what your first row will look like. And now we can join that back onto the main body. So to join, you're going to put a slip stitch into the stitch that's directly below where you just finished the row, if that makes sense. So if you can see, I'm just showing you on camera here how it lines up. That was where I started from. This is the next single crochet stitch below. put in a slip stitch and then it's connected and then you want to slip stitch into the next stitch along so this is where you're going to start the next row so for some reason it stopped filming there and I didn't realize so I'm a few rows later but the principle is exactly the same so I'm going to show you that one more time I'm just rejoining here I'm putting a slip stitch into the next stitch along and then we'll start that next row of ribbing together. So of course you'll have to turn your work to work back along. So spin that around. Now you're going to need to skip those two slip stitches you made and go into the last single crochet of that row. So skip the two slip stitches and go into that first single crochet under both loops. And then you start the ribbing by going into the back loops only. And continue that all the way to the end of the row. And at the end of the row, as with the cuff, I like to put this last single crochet under both loops 
because it just gives it a neater edge. And then chain one, turn your work and continue doing the ribbing just like you did before. Now I've worked the ribbing all the way around and this is the last slip stitch. So I'm going to connect that last row. Putting the slip stitch there. And now I'm ready to seam the ribbing together. So I need to turn my work inside out again so that my seam is going to be on the inside. So here I've just turned it inside out and I've just pulled my yarn hook through so I'm working on the inside. I'm in exactly the same position where we finished and put in that slip stitch. And I'm just going to start working up the inside, seaming exactly the same way that you seamed the ribbing together on the cuff. So I'm going to pick up the loop closest to me on this side and then on the other side I'm just going to pick up one side of that chain and on the body ribbing I just like to join with a slip stitch just because it's a little less bulky it really doesn't make that much difference you can still do simple crochets especially when you're using a smaller size hook like this and I'm just going to continue along all the way to the end of this ribbing and once you've finished that seam and you've sewn in all of your spare yarn tails, you are done. And one last thing, when you're finished, you can sew those two body pieces together up the V or put a connecting stitch at the V-neck if it helps it feel more secure on your shoulders. And I really hope you love your crochet wrap top. Thanks to all my subscribers, as always, for your lovely comments and all your suggestions. And if you're new here, then thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos and like this one to help me decide what I should make next. And I hope to see you all again next time.